number 98. The Space Bar. I knew eventually there'd be a point where I disagreed with AdventureGamers.com's list, but I didn't expect to find it so early. The Space Bar wields a great deal of personality, charm, and humor, but it almost destroyed all of my goodwill for it with an avalanche of irritation and frustration. First off, let's get the technical stuff out of the way. This was the hardest game to get running so far. On Windows 7, it was at least possible to start the game, but spending any amount of time in the kitchen crashed the game almost instantly. From what I can tell, it seems to have something to do with the bank or smacker video format that the original developers used, but without seriously hardcore programming skills, there's not much I can do to fix it. The good news is that making a Windows 95 virtual machine with VMware Player allowed me to play beyond that point and indeed finish the game, so that is what I would recommend if you're looking to play this one. Your Alias Node, a human cop on an alien planet. One of the biggest criminals on the planet is somewhere in a bar near the spaceport, and you have to find him, her, or it before they catch a shuttle off planet. There's just one catch. The criminal is a shapeshifter, able to take the form of any species, and therefore could be any one of the dozens of aliens in the bar. The good news is that you have the ability to dive into anyone's memories using a skill called Empathy Telepathy. The end result is that you wind up exploring a bunch of alien worlds from an alien perspective. And as a design concept to create a unique gameplay experience, I gotta say, that's excellent. And speaking of alien perspectives, there are some whoppers on display here. The aliens were designed by the same guy who did the Mos Eisley Cantina aliens in Star Wars, and it shows. There are some wonderfully creative creatures on display, but Fleabix and Thud are my favorite characters in the game. Fleabix is a hyper-intelligent alien, but he lives in a jar, so the only way he can get anything done is by somehow getting through to his symbiotic partner, the extremely dull-witted Thud, which still usually goes wrong. Thud, walk through the door. Can you understand me? The door! Walk outside! <laughs> Thud, awake now. What you want? You'll also find yourself in the skin of an insectoid bartender with seven eyes trying to get a giant egg to a shuttle or a drug-dealing alien with laryngitis trying to get past a police blockade, or a dancing polyandrist who's trying to get a message to a rebellion, or a robot casino dealer who used to be one of the biggest sports stars on his planet, or a massively wealthy businessman trying to close the deal to sell a planet. The space bar is loaded with great characters and bizarre scenarios. But, as I'm sure you noticed from the start of this review, there is a downside. This is one of the most frustrating and aggravating adventure games I've played in a while, for two very big reasons. The first is logic. This being an alien world with several other alien worlds to explore within it, sometimes the logic is also alien and not easily grasped. It hurts even more that there wasn't a lot of help to be found. In my searches, I found only one complete walkthrough on the internet, and even that is far from perfect. And the second reason is time. So many things in the game need to be done under time constraints, and almost all of them are frustrating. And to make matters worse, the whole game is under one big time constraint. This game is the definition of unforgiving. If you're in a flashback and you screw up, you're booted out of the flashback and have to talk your way back into the flashback before you can load a save. And if you haven't saved, you have to do the entire flashback over again. Save early, save often, save multiple files, save after every damn move. You can get killed or otherwise have your game end at almost any point. I was shouting obscenities at my screen at one point. That's how bad it was. Slits! I can't! You just... You just... You just... Oh, Fleabix! You're turning blue. You need help? Maybe if I, uh, 
shake your jar a little. Stop it! Stop it! You muddle-headed fool! One more thing. I want to find whoever designed the sound for this game and slap them in the face. While the music is nice and the characters are all excellently voice acted uh, with, again, standout performances from uh, Thud and Fleabix, but there are times where the music and the background noise actually overwhelms the character talking to you, so you can't make out what they're saying over the din of everything else. The space bar has some great things going for it, but I just didn't have a lot of fun playing it. If this had been my list, I would have put both Titanic and Nancy Drew above it. That's not to say it's a bad game, not by any stretch. If you're willing to work to get it running, you'll get some enjoyment out of it, surely. And there are far worse adventure games out there. But I don't think I'll be replaying this one anytime soon. Next time, number 97.